Joining us now, Senator David Perdue. He just returned uh, from a trip to the U.S.-Mexico border. Senator, uh, thanks for joining us this morning. I, I think the latest is, and I don't know whether you can uh, shed light on this, uh, the, do you expect uh, President Trump, I think, now said he's going to sign the deal that was uh, arrived at between uh, uh, the bipartisan group of uh, guys in Washington? Well, I hope so. Good morning, guys. Uh, this has been a long time coming. I mean, we're in our fifth month of this fiscal year. This should have been done last year. But I'm hopeful that what we have on the table right now will make both sides get to an agreement and let's move on. We've got to get on to next year's budget and next year's appropriation. We're going to be right back here at the end of September doing the same thing. This, um, I mean, we understand the, the, how important border security is uh, to President Trump, but uh, let's say once we do get things moving, we start building a wall, 55 miles of it now, whatever it is, and then it, it comes along. It, anything else to try to do, in, in your view, in 2019, we just heard, had former Congressman Barney Frank on talking about infrastructure. Anybody talk about uh, other things besides China and, and, and uh, uh, government shutdowns? Well, we have over 300 presidential nominations we've got to get confirmed. We can do that in the Senate without the House. We've got to turn the temperature up on that. But you mentioned the trip to the border. I went to the hottest part of the border, uh, the McAllen sector down there, and I was overwhelmed, Joe, with the, the, the growth in the drug traffic. It's a Fortune 500 equivalent business down there between these two Mexican cartels, and they found the soft spot in that sector, and they're really bringing a lot of drugs in. I was shocked. We went out in the field overnight. We saw the apprehension of a couple of Honduran uh, illegal immigrants. And uh, I will tell you that the Border Patrol people are doing a yeoman's job. We need to give them some help in addition to the wall. And by the way, the three places past presidents have put wall have reduced illegal trafficking down there, both drugs and humans, by about 95 percent. So this is something that we need to take serious. It's an ongoing effort. 55 miles this year will keep the momentum going of the last four presidents. And I think this will be an ongoing topic as we get into next year's budget as well. Right now, I think infrastructure, immigration, trade are the three top things on the agenda this year, and I hope we get to them. So is the, the, the area that you visited, Senator, is that covered by the 55 miles? Uh, they would get some, yes, but uh, the, the issue, that in 2006, they actually built a modern-day type barrier down there. The problem is it's ineffective because there are 35, what I would call a gate, but have never been uh, actually put in. So the traffickers just funnel their business right through there. Look, this is a human tragedy, but it's also bigger than just the human element. The human element, every uh, person from Central America has to pay an $8,000 toll to these two cartels just to cross the border. Then, what that, that's about a $1.6 billion enterprise for the cartels. We think that the drug traffic through that sector alone is over $20 billion, guys. And yep. this, is, this is a dramatic growth. Mostly F M uh, methamphetamine is about a 600% increase over last year. I was not prepared for that. Senator, I mean, I, I remember watching uh, President Obama talk about some of the, the things that need to be done on the border. And, and he was for it. It just seems to me if, if you took Nancy and Chuck and others down there to, to you know, not a 2,000-mile border wall, but if you yeah. took them down to where you went, why, why, why can't reasonable people decide this is something we need to do? I mean, I saw... I saw Beto yesterday say that walls kill people. He said, or the day before, whenever it was. I mean, it was just a, it was a quote that they don't help, they don't save people, they kill people. So they're just so far apart in the, in the two look, parties. To be fair, President Trump is the one who first started using this as rallies and saying, build that wall and kind of politicizing it from that. I, I think reasonable sides can sit down and find places where you have to have. Well, we're not very close now. If one person well, says walls kill people and the yeah. other people, and David Perdue says that there's drugs coming, I mean, it's a, ch it's a chasm. Well, when you're there and you see it personally in an overnight uh, uh, patrol, we were out in the patrol vehicles at night in the fields watching the apprehension of these people, watching drugs come across, listening to the scouts in our, in our ears talk about where the patrols were and so forth. This is a big business. That's what we haven't talked about. So both sides have agreed there's an issue down there. It's been politicized. I hope that this deal that's on the table today that we're only hours away from getting past right. this particular political impasse because both sides, I think, agree that we need border security. Do so you think Trump emphasizing it undercut the, the no, Obamas? I it, I, no, I think he turned it into a talking point first, into a political rally cry because he was using it at, at, well, as rallies but, in such a big way. And that's when the Democrats but said, it's an it issue into that an absolute needs, but it, political it, it football. Doesn't mean, just said, because just, he uses we're it. We're just going to say no. We're just going to say just no. Just because he said. addresses what everybody thought was a problem all along in a, in a high-profile way doesn't all of a sudden make it not worthy of doing it. I don't, think. Uh, anyway, I don't either, but I think I it politicized. Think it, I, I think it became politicized. There was then the demonization 
of, uh, of, of people from Mexico. I think all of that that was put into this sort of very uh, politicized soup, and it made it very difficult for for, for all sides to doesn't deal mean with each that other. there aren't dr- traffic. By the way, there, 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 there are arguments. There are arguments for walls, digital walls, all sorts of things. Right. The question is, how, how do you do it? For, for sure, we need the border security, and the senator makes very interesting points. And we ought to actually get to an answer. But I wanted to come back to the senator, if he's still there, yeah. and say, Senator, you, you mentioned infrastructure, and Joe referred to it. I think infrastructure is very important for the country. I'd be curious to get your input on what you think will happen in 2019, or at least what, in your opinion, you would support in 2019 for infrastructure. Well, last year, the OMB actually, for the first time in 20 years, fully funded some of our port deepenings and, and restructuring. We def- desperately need that with the post Panamax ships coming in. That infrastructure investment's already underway. The oil investments that we've made in the last two years and, and are making us an ec- a net exporter right now of energy. But we've got roads, bridges, uh, rail bridges, et cetera, that we've got to get serious about. The idea of the federal government funding all this out of a $20 trillion debt situation is not going to be uh, workable. So we've got to find other solutions. They're there. We just have to be willing to put revenue streams on some of these projects to get uh, the funding in a public-private partnership. Hey, Senator, the the New Green Deal, I I really, you know, just being totally honest, I think it's the gift that keeps on giving it to to Republicans. But I watched Amy Klobuchar uh, last night. and. If she says, I'm going to vote for it because it's aspirational, because I want a clean environment. And, and I guess they're all going to probably say that, that it's aspirational. But, you know, the actual details of it are bonkers, if you really, if, if you look at some of the details. Now, if McConnell wants to bring it up for, for a vote, you know, last time they did that, it didn't work. It was a Bernie Sanders, Medicare for all, and you got 57 nays from, I guess, Republicans and Manchin and a couple others, but then you got 43 presents. You got no one voting against it. So... They're going to do the same thing if, if, if you try to pin them down on whether they, you know, they want to pay for people that are that un- unwilling to work and free college and free child care and everything else that's in, you know, no meat, no, no air f- travel, but uh, they'll just vote present. They won't, you won't be able to pin them down. Well, the real issue in, in your prior sec- uh, segment talked about this a little bit, but we only collect $2.2 trillion in total taxes. It would take a 50% increase in taxes alone just to pay for the shortfall we already have, the trillion-dollar-a-year shortfall. Then you add on that this green deal that they're talking about, and then, oh, by the way, a $3 trillion price tag for Medicare for all. All of a sudden, this gets to be silly math, guys. And, and so what I'm saying is you can't cut your way out of here, you can't spin your way out of here, you can't uh, tax your way out of here. This has got to be an all-of-the-above uh, conversation. And the bigger issue, frankly, is what are we going to do with Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid? Those programs have to be saved, and nobody's really talking about that today. Those are the 800-pound gorillas in this conversation. Do you think taxes are going up on, on anybody at this point in the next uh, three, four years, Senator? Because Boy, there, there seem, you think there's a groundswell, Andrew, in the, the country? Boy, I really hope not. We just gave a tax cut, increase. and we're seeing the benefits from that. I don't think we need a further cut, frankly, because of the fact that uh, over half of households in America pay no federal income tax today. So what we've got right now is a settling out period. We haven't really even seen the benefit, the full benefits of the tax deal from last year. The regulatory work we did in 17 and 18 provided a lot of enthusiasm, uh, enthusiasm out there and it freed up capital. Right now, we need to let that run a little while, and I'm hopeful that these trade conversations will give us all something to be optimistic about as they come back from China this week. Sen- Senator, just to come back to that point on, uh, on taxes, uh, and you also, I think, have been uh, quite supportive of trying to address the deficit. Uh, the, the current deficit is, of course, expanding faster than had been projected, and, and looking into next year, that seems to be the same, closing in on a trillion dollars. If you don't increase taxes, let's say you don't, what expenses do you reduce? How do you control that deficit? Well, first of all, we have a DOD audit for the first time in history, thanks to President Trump. We have about, according to the General Account- Accountability Office, about $400 billion of redundant agencies and wasted spending. We can get at that. But I think the biggest issue right now is what are we going to do to continue to grow the economy? Because what we've done so far is proven that if the economy grows over 100 basis points over what it did under President Obama, that that produces about $300 billion in new tax revenue a year. And so what we've done is lowered, honestly, even though the the deficit is still going up, what we've done is lowered the long-term debt curve by about $3 trillion. But we've only scratched the surface, as you guys talk about a lot. It turned $22 trillion yesterday. 
Senator, do you think that and we got to run? But do you think there's any value, given the conversation that's happening in this country, including what's happening on the left uh, about taxing the wealthy, to try to close any of the loopholes that do exist? Would you be in favor, for example, of, of closing what I think is a glaring and obvious one in, in carried interest, for example, just on just on the on the basis of the of, of others feeling like the system is unfair? Oh, I totally agree. Look, I argued we, we cleaned up some of the corporate uh, 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 deductions last year in the tax bill. There's more work to be done there to make it equitable for all. But remember, the tax bill also took about 4% of taxpayers off the roll last year. So that's also flowing through the economy. Look, this tax bill, the tax system that we have is so antiquated, it's, it's, uh, it's out of control. It really needs to be reworked.